Hello, I'm Tom, and I'm going to be your guide today on how to do the operation of our EPRO electric bed bug heaters. Either an EPRO 400 or an EPRO 600, they set up and operate the same. The difference is just the power and the amount of heating coils and a couple more cords. So with that said, this is an EPRO 400 we're going to use in this demonstration of our basic EPRO 400 package. And we have a couple different power options, we're going to discuss that and also show you the fan in the setup and then in another part part two we're going to go over a basic setup of doing heat treatment for a room a bedroom well so this is our EPRO 400 as you can see it has coils in it there are six coils in here each coil is eight amps and is powered individually by its own separate power cord and I'm going to show you so we're going to set that up so let's take a closer look at that okay so as I said before, each uh, of the units have separate heating coils. There are six heating coils in the EPRO 400 and eight in the EPRO 600. Each one is individually powered. And we have all of the six cords for this one. And these are heavy gauge, 12 gauge cords lighted in. And so the lights are on so you know that you have power coming into the unit. So we're going to plug all these in. And that's how you, how you power up the system. Each one is 8 amps each, and don't forget that. So if you have a, a wall lamp outlet circuit, those are usually about 15 amps. Or a, a bathroom or a kitchen circuit could be 20 amps. You can put two into a 20 amp and one into a 15 amp, just making sure they're separate circuits. One of these circuits, uh, these plugs, are a uh, designated a green one, and that powers up the fan. So uh, I'll show you. We're going to do this right now. So now we're showing that we have the green light on for the fan and a red light for the heaters. This one's not on yet, so we haven't powered it up yet. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is the control panel. Now the control panel, as you see, has, is very simple and easy operation. We have the fan, and we have a heater, and we have the thermostat. The thermostat is preset at our factory and it's ready to go for you so it doesn't come on and off but there are instructions for that but you should not have to adjust this in operation you're going to turn on the fan first and then the heater also we have a note showing that there's a rattle in the case now there's nothing wrong it is a safety switch for a tilt shutoff switch so in the uh, case that the unit should tip over it will turn everything off it's a safety feature that you'll hearing. Now, as for our fan, it's our AM4000 fan. Puts out 4000 CFM. It has a 20-foot cord already built into it. You just simply plug it in. All of our units and our heater units are all 120 volts, as we said before. And this fan has two speeds. It's got a high and a low on it. So that's in simple operation and that's ready to go. Now I'm going to go into the positioning of setting up a room. So okay now we have everything ready to go. We have our heater powered up and our fan powered up. So now we're positioning and starting to prep the room. So in part of the preparation of the room, as I'm going to show you, we go around you open all the drawers that are in the furniture and make sure that if things are flush on the ground they, you get moved and I'll show you more of that later. But make sure you want to keep thinking in your mind that all the air has to travel around all the furnishings. That's very important to know. So just think about that. So now as you can see, the mattress is kind of strangely lifted off its, the base that it has. Whether it's a box spring or a, a bed board or a pedestal, you need to separate it. So the idea is that, as you can tell, when we go to heat, all the heat air is going to travel around, completely around this mattress. And it's also going to include the, the framing of the bed. And that's going to go for all the furnishings. Now we set up our heater at kind of an angle. This is a room that doesn't have a long wall in it, but you want to try to bounce it off the wall. Maybe at a 45 or something like bounce it off the wall. You want to be sure that the heat is traveling behind the headboards because that's a great harborage for bed bugs. And the eggs get into the the box springs or in the framing work so you want to make sure everything's traveling around and it's going to be pushing the air this way and then another position we have the heater here you can position it down a little further in the second stage if you want to try to get it down here making sure that you're 
getting it, you know, circulating this air real robustly, strong all around. Now, on the other side, I'm going to show you that we have the fan, and you're going to create a, a convection of heat, a cyclonic effect. So you have a vortex, a convection, just like a cooking oven. You're going to circulate this heated air real strong in this room between the fan that's in the heater blowing this direction is being picked up by the other strong fan that we have over there and throwing it back around so that it throws it around and creates this circulation real strong. In the meantime, it's getting between all the furnishings, it's going in the drawers, that's why it's important to open things and if you have a pile uh, of objects around or belongings that you want to be able to move them around and change things around. For instance, I'm going to show you, we're going to take a walk around and show you what I did before. So keep in mind, all the air has to circulate. Okay, we're showing that our heater is powered up and aimed at the bed, which is separated. So we have that air flow going through that. It's coming over at an angle, going into this, the back side of the bed, coming back over here on this side, being picked up by the fan. The fan is now blowing the heated air back around to the heater again and then it circulates over and over again in the meantime as you've seen we have the drawers are open here the bed and mattress or box spring rather is separated the drawers are open everything is open including the back area and we're getting the heat going behind the the headboard now there's an object here there's a piece of furniture here for example that has a flat bottom on it and it's what we recommend is that after you uh, heat for a while that you move this, move this piece over so you're heating the underside that's not getting any heat right now. Because it's been proven that sometimes in a pile or underneath objects it can be 130 degrees in the room, 140, and it might only be 85 or so underneath an object. So keep that in mind. You need to always have the air circulation. So if you have a flat object, you need to move it at some point so you're heating this area as well. Now, indirect heat is your friend in this case. When you're heating and you have these nice furnishings, that indirect heat on TVs and such is proven to be safe. You don't ever want to aim the heater at sensitive equipment or sensitive furniture. The ambient air temperature in the room is what you're really using. The only time you're really directing heat is at like the mattress, box spring, uh, sofa, cushions, but uh, within a range, so it just goes at it. But the rest of the items, you don't need to do that. Okay, and a quick word about a couple other handy items. When you're inspecting for bed bugs, use a flashlight because you want to go around looking at the, the seams of a mattress and in the, the, the quilting of a mattress. You're going to be looking at that under here and you're going to be looking for either the bed bugs live or the, uh, the evidence of bed bugs, which would be eggs or fecal matter might be around here. So you want to be sure to look real close and look all along in this area. So use a flashlight as part of the tool. Another tool you can use in a different way is like a card, like a credit card type of thing. Sometimes you can take a card and scrape it along the side and see if you found any any uh, uh, eggs or something, you can scrape it here. Now, also, and that can be used in little small cracks that you can't get to, you can put it in there and see if you see anything on it. That's one way to check for infestations too. And sometimes we just do that to see if there are eggs. But mostly, flashlight's very good. Always keep your tool of your temperature monitoring with you. Now you also see that maybe there's some artwork around. You might have questions about that. If it's a real high and fine piece, you take your Picasso outside and deal with that separately. But in the meantime, you'd want to take this down and check behind it. Bed bugs are known to put eggs back there. It's anywhere can be a harbor. Check behind it individually. And again, if the heat is ambient and it's not uh, aimed at it, it should be fine. If you are concerned, you want to individually check it and handle that uh, separately in a different way and maybe feel like you want to remove that. So removable items sometimes on uh, very fine furniture, you want to take the furnishings off of the top of it because if it's a nice finished piece, maybe it gets a little soft. You want anything like metal to be on top of a finished piece because the metal gets hot. You want to remove certain things, plants and uh, some items like that that are in our instructions that talk about that in more detail. But that's part of your prep. You're going to open up everything, 
just and leave as much as you can really in there. Your bedding material that's in there, you take it very carefully. You don't want to walk through another area because bed bugs could flop, you know, could drop off, and uh, you could be doing this. So you want to take very good care of that and go and launder that completely separate, or you can leave it in the room, which is one of the other preferred methods, and just open it up and make sure you're heating that as well, and then launder it. It's either way. You can do that, but you have to be very careful if you're walking around with laundry with linens or something beddings. So that's a couple of items there. Now we're going to talk about a couple more tools.